Good morning, Bethel kids. Welcome to our elementary worship. We're so excited today because it's been exactly one year since we have actually opened up our church school worship. And today we're actually opening our church for you to come. And I am so excited to meet every single one of you today as you come back to worship here with us. For those of you who are here today, we'll receive the real cotton candy made right here at our church. So, hope to see all of you in person very soon. But until then, we will continue our Zoom Bible study with our teachers online. And here are today's greetings to you from some of our friends. Yes, Nim. 사랑해요. 사랑해요. 고마워요. Hello, say hello. 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 Okay, and say thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Very good. Happy Sunday. We miss you. We love you. Love you. Bye. 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 Hello. 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 Hi. Bye. 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 Hello, Beto. Fifth grade boys and I have a message for you today. Boys, what's that message? Have a blessed Sunday. Have a blessed Sunday. Hi everyone. This is uh, Teacher Ilan's class from sixth grade, and we would like to welcome every one of you to our church worship. Hi. 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 With our greetings to you. And gathering all of your hearts of worship, let us now worship the Lord. So please stand up and let's go praise the Lord.
to think about the goodness of the Lord. He gives me everything I need and so much more. So I just want to lift my hands and say that I love Him. I just want to lift my heart in prayer. To think about the goodness of the Lord He gives me everything I need and so much more So I just want to lift my hands And say that I love Him I just want to lift my heart in Let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for gathering us together here for today's worship. We come with glad and joyful heart because we are looking up to you. You created us, redeemed us, called us on your own with your unfailing and everlasting love. Thank you. You taught us that the gospel of Jesus Christ is for everyone, Jews and Gentiles. Help us to remember that we were Gentiles, outsiders, yet you loved us and called us clean. Remind us to include and kind to everyone, especially outsiders at our church, school, and home. Help us to remember that you pour out your great love by sending Christ to die for us while we were still sinners, so that we also love and encourage one another. Now we are all ears to your word. Please bless Pastor Jamie with the Holy Spirit as she tells today's story. Bless us so that we have open heart to listen and live your word. Help us to know and love you more as we grow in our relationship with you. May, our, may we glorify with our lives. We love you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Today, I have brought some things to show you. Well, first, here's a candle. And I have a flashlight. So if the electricity goes out and you are in darkness, which one is better for you to use? Would it be the candles or would it be the flashlight? Right, of course, flashlight would be a lot better and quicker to light up the room. I have a couple other things. I have a penny and a quarter. All right, so which coin is better? They're both coins, but which one is better? And of course, the quarter has a lot more value. So it would be a lot better than a penny. Right? I have a couple other things. I have a strawberry here. Yummy. And I have a broccoli. Which one would you think is better? Is it the strawberries or the broccolis? Well, as much as you may like the broccolis, I'm sure the strawberries are a lot better. It is sweeter, right? So the strawberry is better. I have a couple other things. I have a water bottle here, which is a plastic water bottle that we all drink from and we all carry. And I also have the hydro flask. 
that you guys all like. Well, which one is the better water bottle? You would definitely say the Hydro Flask because this one lasts longer, right? This one, just throw away, but this one you would not throw away, so this one is better. My last one, I have earphones, which I'm sure you all have, but I also have the AirPods. Which one is better between the earphone and the AirPod? It's smaller, but you would definitely say this is better. Even though they work the same between the two, you would say this is cordless and you could carry it around, while this one you have to connect. So, this is better. Well, as we think about what is better, we'll be learning about how Jesus is better today. And he is better than anything and everything. So, as we think about what is better, let us turn to our Bibles to the book of Hebrews in the New Testament. Chapter 1, verse 1 through 4. Chapter 1, 1 through 4 reads, In the past, God spoke to our ancestors through the prophets at many times and in various ways. But in these last days, he has spoken to us by his Son, whom he appointed heirs of all things, and through whom also he made the universe. The Son is the radiance of God's glory and the exact representation of his being, sustaining all things by his powerful word. After he had provided the purification for sins, he sat down at the right hand of the majesty in heaven. So he became as much superior to the angels as the name he has inherited is superior to theirs. The last verse says, He is superior, which means he is so much better. Who is he? Jesus Christ. So now let us see the story for today. Please pay good attention as you hear the story of Jesus. The early church was made up of almost all Jewish believers who were persecuted for following Jesus. Because their lives had become difficult, many believers began to wonder if following Jesus was worth it. Some may have even thought about giving up on Jesus altogether. The Holy Spirit helped a Christian leader write words of encouragement to the early church in the book of Hebrews. He wrote, Long ago, God spoke to his people through prophets. Now he speaks through Jesus. Jesus is God the Son, and he is like God in every way. Jesus is better than angels because he is God's Son, the eternal King and creator of everything who sits at God's right hand. But Jesus humbled himself to become lower than the angels for a time when he became a man. Jesus became a person like us to die and then rise again. Jesus' work rescues people from sin. All who believe in him become his brothers and sisters. Jesus became like us in every way so he could become a merciful and faithful high priest for us. Because Jesus suffered and was tempted, he is able to help us when we are tempted. This is why Jesus is the greatest. He is greater even than Moses, who was a faithful servant of God. Jesus was an even better servant. God used Moses to bring the law to his people, but God used Jesus to bring the gospel. This is why we cannot turn away from Jesus. Instead, we need to encourage one another each day so that we don't give in to sin. We don't want to be like the Israelites who Moses led out of Egypt and then rebelled against God and perished in the wilderness. The Israelites wanted a land of rest, but even Joshua could not provide rest for God's people. We want to enter into God's rest, and Jesus has provided something even better than land, spiritual rest in Him. Because Jesus is such a great high priest for us, 
we can hold fast to our faith. Jesus knows our weaknesses because he became a human and was tempted, although he never sinned. Because of Jesus, we can approach God with boldness and God will give us mercy and grace. This is why Jesus is better than anything and why we cannot turn away from him. The first covenant that God provided through Moses has been replaced by a second, better covenant through Jesus. Salvation is found only in Jesus. Jesus is better than anyone and anything. He is the better prophet, the better priest, and the better king. Everyone who trusts in Jesus has salvation from sin through his perfect life, death, and resurrection. We've been studying the book of Acts today, and we're going into the book of Hebrews because the Easter Resurrection Sunday is coming in a couple of weeks. And as we are preparing for the Passion Week, which is the week Jesus goes through before going on the cross, which is the biggest event of Christianity, because that's why Jesus came on this earth, to do God's work. And that's why Jesus says on the cross before he dies, it is finished. We will be coming back to the book of Acts after the Easter Resurrection Sunday. But to prepare for the special events, we need to understand who Jesus is. And of course, you all know who he is. He is the Son of God. But today, as we learn from the book of Hebrews, we learn more about Jesus, the Son of God. And at first, we don't know the author of the book of Hebrews, who wrote the book. But we do know that he wrote it to encourage the believers to continue in their faith for many were being persecuted for believing in Jesus. So the author tells us who Jesus is. First, he tells us in chapter 1, as we read, that he is the heir of the king of the universe. We read it in chapter 1, verse 2, that his son, whom he appointed heirs of all things, and through whom also he made the universe. And then in verse 3 and 4 says, Verse 3, the sun is the radiance of God's glory and the exact representation of his being. He sat down at the right hand of the majesty in heaven. So he became as much superior to the angels as the name he has inherited is superior to theirs. So he tells us that Jesus is not only the son of God, but he reigns as king over all heaven and earth as he is seated at the right hand of God in heaven. He has been given the authority over heaven and earth. He is the greater than all angels and greater than any kings on this earth. He is the majestic king of the universe. Second, in chapter 2, the author tells us, Know that this great king, Jesus Christ, came to this earth as a human being becoming lower than the angels just for a little while to come to help his children, you and I. In chapter 2, verse 14 to 18 says, Since the children have flesh and blood, he too shared in their humanity, so that by his death he might break the power of him who holds the power of death, that is, the devil, and free those who are all their lives were held in slavery by their fear of death. For surely it is not angels he helps, but Abraham's descendants. For this reason he had to be made like them, fully human in every way, in order that he might become a merciful and faithful high priest in service to God, and that he might make atonement for the sins of the people. Because he himself suffered when he was tempted, he is able to help those who are being tempted. So here in chapter 2, the author tells us that Jesus had to come in humanity, which means as a human being. Though he is God, he had to come in flesh and blood like you and I, so that by his death on the cross, he can break the power of the devil who holds us as captive under the power of death. 
He came fully human so that he can be our high priest that makes atonement for our sins of the people. In the Old Testament, there were high priests who served in the temple of God, and they were the only ones who could go into the Holy of Holies of the temple where the Ark of the Covenant was, which presented the presence of God to make the atonement for the sins of the people. They serve God like the pastors today, going before the Lord to ask for, for forgiveness for the sins of the people. In chapter 2, it tells us that Jesus came as human being to be the ultimate high priest for you and I, since there is no other way for us to be forgiven of our sins except through the blood of Jesus Christ, dying on the cross as the Lamb of God. Jesus our great high priest brought the better covenant. He is our ultimate high priest. The high priest is the one who goes before the Ark of the Covenant, and this is what it may have looked like. And inside the Ark of the Covenant were 10 commandments, the two tablets uh, of Moses of the 10 commandments, and Aaron's staff that had budded with the leaf, and the pot of manna that came from heaven. Well, the first covenant was given through Moses. What is a covenant? Do you know what the word covenant means? Covenant is an agreement of a contract, a promise of God. For example, when we go buy something big, of course we can't buy it like our parents, buy a house or a car or a business, um, they sign a contract, okay, between the two people. There's a paper that they have to sign and for the buyer and the seller between the two people because it's an agreement between, the, between them and they both have to sign it because it tells them how much they are agreeing to pay for the house or the car. And it, it is a binding agreement between the two people. Well, God makes a covenant with us. He makes a promise. He made a promise with us through the covenant. And it was given through the Ten Commandments of Moses. He told the Israelites that if you obey my commandments, you will be blessed. You will live. And it was a promise. But did the Israelites keep all the Ten Commandments? Can you and I keep all the Ten Commandments? Of course not. We know from the Bible that the Israelites continued to disobey God. They could not keep those commandments. And definitely, we cannot obey those commandments. God's commandments are the highest. And therefore, the Israelites could not be blessed as God had promised them. And you and I cannot be blessed as God promised us through that covenant. And we call that the old covenant. But God always keeps his promises. We know that, right? He is faithful to keep our promises. And that's why Jesus had to come to do God's work. In chapter 3 of the book of Hebrews, tells us that Jesus is better than Moses. Moses came as a prophet who comes with the word of God to tell what God wants through those Ten Commandments. That's what the prophets in the Old Testament did. They came and spoke God's words. Well, Moses was that prophet as he came with the Ten Commandments. But as chapter 1 and verse 2 says, But in these last days, he has spoken to us by his Son. Who has spoken to us? God has spoken to us by his Son, Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ comes as the final prophet of God who comes as the Word of God Himself. He doesn't just come with the Word of God. He is the Word Himself. He comes not only to fulfill the promise of God, but He comes as the new covenant of God. He comes 
as the promise himself. He comes as the word and the fulfillment of God's covenant. For anyone who believes in Jesus Christ will be blessed. Anyone who believes in Jesus Christ will have life eternal. And that's why we say Jesus is the better prophet, the better priest, the better king. He is better everything. From the Old Testament, we, we have seen the prophets and the priests and the kings. But God has sent our ultimate priest and prophet and king of all kings. So Jesus is better. Now let us go to Pastor Brian with questions from kids. Hey there, I'm Pastor Brian and it's time for questions from kids. Adam from Union Springs, Alabama asks, I like playing games with my friends, but I feel so mad when I lose. Is it wrong to want to be the best? No, I would say there's nothing at all wrong with wanting to be the best. I think in a way we should. Uh, the Bible tells us that we should pursue excellence. We should pursue to be the best we can be in all areas of life. So I think in a way it's really right and fitting for you to do that, Adam. But here's the concern. How do you handle when you realize you're not? Like you say, and you're playing a game and you lose, so you're not the best at that game that time. How do you respond to that? What is your heart about that? The Bible also tells us that we need to have humility in our hearts. We need to acknowledge that there will be times that we're not the best, other people will be better than us, and we need to be okay with that, and we need to encourage them and be glad for those others and celebrate when they do well. So if you're a poor loser, if, if you pout when you lose, uh, if you refuse to, to tell the person who won congratulations and are kind of a bad sport, then that's revealing a lack of humility and a problem in your heart posture that I would think you need to address. So you wanna try to be the best, you wanna really do the best in everything you can, but always be willing to celebrate when other people are better than you, to have humility, and point when you are the best, point to the one who is even better than you, that's Jesus Christ. We do the best we can in every area of life so we can point others to him, the one who gave us the ability to do everything we can do. So here's a question back for you to consider. What attitudes in your heart do you need to ask God to change? So what attitude in your heart do you need to ask God to change? As Pastor Brian asked, do you have a heart of humility? Do you have a heart of service and to point others to Christ? Do you have a heart to encourage and bless others? Let us keep our eyes and our heart focused in Jesus Christ, the author and perfecter of our faith. So let us pray. Close your eyes, hands together, and pray to the Lord. Dear Heavenly Father, I thank you so much that through today's story, you have taught us who Jesus Christ is. Not only is he the Son of God, but he is the better prophet, the better priest, the better king, and he is better than anything. Lord, thank you for your promise. Thank you for fulfilling it through Jesus Christ. Thank you for the new covenant that you have given us through Jesus Christ. And thank you for the life eternal that you have given us through Jesus Christ. So Lord, I pray for our students to know who Jesus is and to trust in him alone. We thank you and praise you. In the name of Jesus, we pray, amen. Hello everyone, happy Lord's Day. Let's start with this week's memory verse. Put to death, therefore, whatever belongs to your earthly nature, sexual immorality, impurity, lust, evil desires, and greed, which is idolatry. Because of these, 
the wrath of God is coming. Colossians chapter 3, verse 5 and 6. Okay, today we will be doing a snack craft, which means you get to eat it. Um, as you can see over here, this is what we will be making today. Can you tell what this is? Maybe, maybe not. It is actually inspired by the Ark of the Covenant, something that we learn about in the Old Testament, right? So as we learn about Jesus being our new covenant, I thought we can make a fun snack craft inspired by the Ark of the Covenant, okay? So it's actually very easy to make. So let's get started. So from your craft bag, take out your cotton candy you received, right? Who doesn't love cotton candy, right? Um, Rice Krispie Treats. And you should have received um, this little bag of pretzels, little pretzels. Only other thing you would probably want to grab maybe from your kitchen is maybe a plate and a chapstick. It could be a metal one or a wooden one, doesn't matter, okay? Because this is gonna help puncture the Rice Krispie Treat, okay? So the first thing we're going to do is open up your Rice Krispie Treat. It should be this um, like rectangular shape, box looking shape, right? So taking you're um, taking the chapstick. We will be making holes right here at the edge. One here and one here. Like this. And you wanna go in maybe like half an inch, all right? Like that. Turn it around. Let's do that on both sides, like this. I think the real Ark of the Covenant, it actually had rings and they put rods in, but um, ours, we're, it's just inspired. It's not an exact replica, right? All right, so taking, oops, that one is broken. Taking four pieces of pretzel, just like what you see over here, we're gonna go ahead and stick these in, okay? Just like maybe what the rods would have been like because they carry the Ark of the Covenant, right? In the olden days. So hopefully yours look something like this, okay? And um, on the or in the Ark of the Covenant, there's cherubs, which are angelic beings, right, with wings. So inspired by that design, we will be making our own wings that look something like this using the cotton candy, all right? So I'm gonna maybe take this blue one, go ahead and open this up. Cotton candy is so, it's fun to eat, fun to play around with. It even smells really delicious, right? So try to take like, um, grab a, like a big, like a big piece, not like small tiny piece, right? Oop. Okay. And then think feather, think feathery, like wing, okay? So I'm just gonna pull away some pieces to try to make a shape of like a wing, okay? There's no wrong way to do this. Like, that's already kind of looking like a wing. You see that, right? And if you're tempted to eat some, I'm sure you can have some, all right? <laughs> okay, so let me move this one out of the way so I can so take that, it's quite sticky, the Rice Krispie, so you can just go ahead and tack it down just like this and it just stands right up, okay? Now let's do the other side. Take a big chunk of the cotton candy just like this and peel away at it until you get, ooh, look at that. It's already like a shape like a wing. All right, that was cool. All right, so I'm gonna stick it over here. and your fingers will get really sticky, but that's okay. You're gonna be tempted to lick it. I'm not gonna lick it, but you can go wash your hands too. So there it is. Your snack inspired by the Ark of the Covenant. 
now you can go ahead and enjoy the rest of your cotton candy. Okay, so that's it for today. Thank you for joining. See you next time. Bye. Now is a time of offering. Please give your offering to the Lord. Send it to church or bring it with you now that we're open. Once again, we have our Zoom Bible study. After our worship, remember to be connected with your teachers and your class. Enjoy your time. And if you're not connected, please email me right here so that I could connect you to your class. And as I said, we are open. And we like to invite all of you to come back, but it is a limited seating. First come, first serve. So please register early. And we're going to be expecting more new friends to come next week. And so, um, come and enjoy our cotton candy as well as our fellowship together as we worship the Lord together. We have our memory verse contest coming up. It is going to be um, April 18th. Are you memorizing Colossians chapter 3? I hope that everyone is trying and everyone can do it. So please memorize God's words. So let us end our worship with the Lord's Prayer. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our debts as we also have forgiven our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. All right, it was wonderful worshiping with you, and I hope that you have a wonderful week. Until next Sunday, I'll see you later. Have a good week. Bye.